Hey guys, it's Queen Bija, and in today's video, I will be reacting ring to episode 8 of season 2 of Beastars. Let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. Mind you, I am tired as fuck. I've been gone all fucking day today. It is almost 1.30 in the morning, and your girl, like, has been rushing to get everything done. And plus, the fact is, I also want to read my book. Um, even though y'all cannot see that, but that is Kuma Kuma Vera 1. Everything, but at the same time, I want to take a good-ass shower, lay in my bed, and sleep. I don't know where the fuck I'm getting this energy from. Uh. When the light shines, it's left to fix it. Really? Oh. Well, yeah, because, you know, your carnivore is in there. Uh-huh, yeah. And her voice, and like it's a big no no when they mix and it's like that because you know, <laughs> Tim, you know, when he's a fucking poo. Oh, you know, you're so sweet. Creepy, you know, passionate as fuck, but sweet. Well, I mean, hold up. Let me just say this. Sometimes, in a way, you guys are the bad guys. I mean, you, you, you eat them. The controversy, oh God. Aww. Oh. Was that an elephant? That's so cute. Really? Because does it 
clash with your... Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, honestly. No, of course. They're cute. They in love with each other. Mm -hmm. This a date. They gonna confess to each other by the end of this episode. <laughs> I mean, because honestly, like, I do like these two together. They're interesting. But I was like, for a moment, I kind of was shipping Sheila with Juno. Oh, of course. Oh, Peach. Oh, yeah, they dating. They dating. Yeah. They gonna tell everybody by the end of this episode. Be like, we dating, Peach. Look at us. No. <laughs> No, she going to keep it for herself because she loves you that much. <laughs> they adorable. If they don't date by the end of this damn series, I'm going to sue. Is that a donkey? No, that's not a donkey. Oh, okay. So, are we gonna kick his ass? I mean, I think it's because of the fact is you're going from a carnivore to an omnivore. That has to be the only reason why. Exactly. Do you feel less of a man? Like your pride's gone? Okay. <laughs> Was that really necessary? Oh, oh fuck. Oh, hell no. Nah. Mm. Oh! I don't like him. He's not safe. Oh, hell no. Nah. 
Push him back with your feet. Something. Oh, like killers or, you know, mm. Oh, damn. Oh. Shouldn't that go to someone more important? Like, you know, maybe second, third year, something? But hey, I like the change. It just shows how far, like, Juno has come. I'm about to say as a person. As, yeah, in a way, as a person. Because I never would have thought that this, she would have gotten this. Especially because of the fact is it seems like to me Juno will do anything and everything in her power to be the next B star. And if this is one of the many things slash roads that she has to take, of course she's gonna take it. Well, I mean, if you would tell them, then of course I think they would understand. But because of the fact is a lot of people do want to come together because it's the modern thing. But at the same time, there is pressures. Because of the fact is it's so easy to just instantly kill any one of them. Oh, Haru. <laughs> You're not going to stalk her again, are you? But now you know. Don't don't you know? Read the room. I don't think she meant it like that, but they're, yeah. I mean, how are you right like that? But they're close. But yeah, not as close as you would be. I don't like that face though. What you about to do? Oh, you want her to help me gardening. <laughs> well, I mean, I, psh, I wouldn't accept with the way she was smirking at her like that. Like, hell nah. Be like, mm mm. You just scoping out the competition once again. I don't think it's just that. I think it's the way he feels. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The way he feels around her, the fact that, you know, he, in a way, can take care of her, even though Haru was very much independent. 
and such, but he just wants to be there for her all the time. <laughs> just because she's small doesn't mean she's helpless there's a lot of things that Haru can do that you probably don't even know of oh god <laughs> oh Haru yeah, because honestly, Haru, you don't have that many girlfriends, but, I mean, because of <laughs> for reasons, but it's okay. At least just have one, and it can be Juno. <laughs> Don't make me ship it. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Oh, Juno. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I thought she was gonna be like, no, I'll take you. I still don't trust her. Fucking stop it. Did you get something to eat? You don't look like much skin and bones. Because you miss her and she misses you. Y'all need to fucking talk. I'm just saying. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Woo. Wouldn't he be the first official crocodile we've seen in this show? Seriously? I mean, but no, this might be really worse, like some BDSM type ish. I, I did. Uh. Well, thank God we don't get to see it, cause I, I don't want to know what the fuck happened. That was probably some torture porn. 
That's a no in my book. No, I don't think he wants to end his life just yet. But now you, you're a person and you have a purpose in your life. Hmm? Oh, that'd be funny if that's hard. It's hard, isn't it? Damn it, Louise. What the fuck is that? You motherfucker. What the fuck? It was, wasn't it? All right, to whoo, are you? You were dreaming about her. Juno told Haru about you. Why don't you want to see her? Because of the fact that you still care about her and you don't want to get in Legacy's way. See, y'all, oh my lord, Jesus Christ. Boys, boys, we need to talk. We need to talk. I totally understand that you don't want to get in each other's way and you just want the one girl to choose between y'all. Hell, that's like, you know, when me and my friends, we find a really nice, good looking, fine behind man and we are like, yes, let's go for him. But then, you know, we all like, hey, we go up a cold dibs. We ain't fighting over this man. We choose one. Or we have to let him choose. Let him choose. Shit, I don't care. But, you know, if you choose me, then, you know, I... Yeah, bitch. <laughs> but I, I... It's just something tells me that the, uh, the other reason why he doesn't want to go back and honestly try to have a better relationship with Haru is because... When he's with Haru, he feels... Anytime he, like, is with her or thinks about her or whatever, he feels weak. And he's not the same person that he was in season one. This is a completely different person. Like, sometimes I can't even... When I look at Louise now and to see what he was like in season one, I it, it is the same person, but at the same time, he's just a completely different man the way that he's grown up to the point where we've seen him as like this perfect guy or perfect deer almost prince uh prince like that okay someone like him has never gotten into any problems or anything he's so perfect that like you know his shit don't sink and stuff like that but because of the fact is now when you see him going down this dark pathway, it feel you feel a certain type of way. And you're like, but you've always shown your softer side towards us and others. So it's like the whole entire time he has a mask on that he's been hiding his true self, you know, what he used to be like as a piece of meat slash price tag. And now he's continuing that, except he's not a piece of meat and a piece of meat anymore or a price tag. He's just a more stronger person than he was when he was a kid and such. And the things that he's doing, what he thinks is right, but in my opinion are bad. But of course, he's not going to care what I think, what you think, what anybody in this this world thinks he's gonna do whatever the fuck that he wants to he's very similar to um nope i gotta look it up because i don't remember his name and it's been like a hell of a long time since i watched the show because this was a patreon show i think it's g-u-i-n penguin d-r yep penguin drum He's very similar to, um, what is his name? Was it Shoma? No, um, Kanaba. He's very, very hella similar to, um, Kanaba. I mean, Kanaba, you know, was a bad boy. He, he, you know, I know. Like, okay, I'll, I'll say this. He, Louise is a, very similar to both Shoma and Kanaba 
from Penguin Drum, uh, Penguin Drum in certain ways. I will say season one, Louise, is Shoma, like, straight up. He's sweet, compassionate, he's caring, he puts others before himself, but then now, um, looking at from season two, from the end of season one going into season two, he's very much like Kamba, because Kamba still cares about, you know, I, I'm not gonna go too, too spoiler territory into Pingo Drum if you haven't seen it, I would say watch it and such, um, the things that both Shoma and Kamba do for Himari, they do it because they love her so much. And with Louise, he's doing it for himself because at the end of the day, you know, he has no one else but himself. Yeah, he has his father, but not like the best relationship with his quote unquote father. Not the best relationship with uh, Legacy. Kind of a good relationship with Haru. Haru in a way is like Himari in a way, but the fact is they're completely different, even though, you know, Himari, in my opinion, she was just a sweet, adorable, precious girl that we love so much. While Haru was just like, you know, hey, I might kick your ass if I have to, but I honestly, really, who knows? Also, with the fact is that Juno is like, I don't know if I can be the type of B-star that, you know, Louise was, um, yeah, Louise, yeah, <laughs> about to say legacy, uh, Louise is trying to be, I feel like, I don't like the fact that she's comparing herself to him. Everybody who essentially wants to be the B-star, probably even the generations before Louise, all have something that made them technically, you know, like, unique and why people essentially, like, voted for that person. So instead of you comparing yourself to people who were almost the B-star and people who were the B-stars of previous gens, just think of things that you can do to better the community and such. I get the fact that, you know, as I said at the beginning of this episode, where it's like the cross species, the inner species, you know, interacting with each other and even though it's like oh yeah it's okay and Juno is like no 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 this is kind of wrong because we don't want you to die them Winnie the Pooh ish um and such and nobody wants to see that happen again hell I don't want to but it, if it was like let, let's just say if it because this would be freaking crazy if this happened if they do decide to separate the herbivores and the carnivores into a separate school, separate classes and such, which, you know, from last week's episode, from the um, text messages and everything indicating that the next school year is that everybody was going to be separated because of the situation of Tim getting bigger and shit like that. Um, I feel like it's also going to be a point where everyone's going to turn on each other. You know, I mean, there is a there's a lot of tension between the um her voice, the kind of words because of, you know, the circle of life. But I mean, there, there's just only really one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four people who could possibly, you know, bring this back together. And that's Juno, Louise, Legacy and Haru, especially really. Um, Legacy and Haru because of the fact is that they're showing everyone that they can be friends technically also in a damn relationship um, of two different species and be together. It's saying that oh if they can do it I can do it as well. Same thing with uh, Sheila and Peach. I mean they were just freaking adorable in this episode. Seeing them go out on their date because it's canon guys probably i don't know they're they're dating they are dating uh that's it but to see you know different species interact with each other hang out with each other even though they're probably getting looks at and you know getting judged for it's like oh hey those two shouldn't be hanging out together that's kind of wrong but it's like they're they're leaders. They're not followers. They're not going to be like everyone else and say, yeah, you know, herbivores should stay over here, carnivores should stay over there, and we shouldn't interact. But it's sometimes in a way better. I don't know what I would say, what else I could say in this situation, but I just, I want it to be better for everybody. I want them to be able to get to the end of the series where they are in a world where everybody lives together peacefully. That it's not a hierarchy or as you know, 
the social norm or you know a totem pole whatever that they can be together that nobody does judge them for the things that they do like i said last week there's so many things that are similar to the real world situation into this damn anime that it's not even funny but oh jesus i can't but other than that guys that is my reaction for you it's episode eight of season two of b stars if you guys enjoyed it please give me a like really helps me out also subscribe to my channel i make videos every single day join my squad and of course i will see you guys officially all i think tuesday or wednesday for episode nine but until then i will see you guys all next time bye